Greetings, people. Person here. Over the past hour, yesterday, I playtested the World Wide Web game. It's like a playtest right now that is live where you can sign up for free with your email and get invited to test the game. When you log in at first, you can use your email or you can use your wallet. So it's a Web3 game, but right now there is nothing with crypto. So there's nothing to purchase, nothing to invest, buy, sell, whatever. This is just the game as it is to be played. The most important thing that we didn't have last ball run is games that are fun to play. That was the big issue. If you're honest, Axie isn't really fun to play. You could say, yeah, it's kind of fun to manage things, but in the end, you just want to get the token or SLP and sell that and make money. On my channel, I played Crypto Blades when that came out. Was that fun to play? No. You press buttons and then you get the token, which you then sell and then you have money. So the whole play to earn part, there was no playing, there was just clicking to get a token to sell it. But now over the last couple of years, more and more games get developed that are actually fun to play. And then after they make sure that they are fun to play, they implement an entire economy with a token and so on and so forth. This right now is just to show you the play test so far, because it's completely free and really fun. They call it the most advanced browser game ever, because what they do is they have the NPCs, I think, hooked up to GPT-3 or 4, which they also show in various tweets. So they interact with you differently. And the entire game world is dynamic. So when you interact with NPCs or they give you a quest for example to get a certain resource that changes over time so when you play world of warcraft and you have to kill five boar to finish a quest maybe that's going to be like three goblins that doesn't mean that all the quests change it's only mentioned for resource management down here so things that npcs ask for are always in a flow adding a layer of strategy to your interactions plus the entire world and the town that is in here you kind of build up with your own decisions that you make because i only played for about an hour so far and only got a couple quests done. I don't know how big of a difference this will be. If you choose the wrong quest or accept the wrong one, you may lose influence with other NPCs. There's an option to join the team as well, and that is the site. That's all you can do. You can sign up if you want to get early access to the playtest invitation down there, and then you can open the game and you can log in. You can use your email or your wallet. When you use your email, you receive a code, enter that, done. But now to the gameplay itself. At the very beginning, you start in one of the building's facilities, talk to like the mayor of the town. He gives you a simple quest like, walk to this person, talk to that. If you want to, you can also fast forward and just skip the dialogue in case you just want to play. And this game has three different areas. It has the town area with different shops where you can craft, you can buy things, interact with the NPCs. On the right hand side, you join the player. That is where you actually play the game. Think of that as a round based roguelike game, kind of like Hades, where after you kill X amount of the NPCs in here, you level up. So you can then choose one out of three different augments, I think they're called, just passive boosts. Then after the first stage, you get to decide, do you want to go home and keep all the loot that you got, everything in your bag, or do you want to go again, go to the second stage? If you go to the second stage, you can also pick any of the Let's call it level 1 abilities or physical abilities. They have different kinds of abilities. And the more you play the game, the more quests you finish. Along the storyline, you will get to unlock different abilities that you can then pick on the first, second and third stage, so on and so forth. There's always a pool of three that you can pick from. So even if you have five abilities unlocked, there's gonna be a randomized pool of three. You have, for example, a boomerang that shoots back and forth. Your normal attack automatically attacks as far as I know. Later on in the game, I got something like a golf club, which has like three fields of damage, up to three fields, almost like an explosive radius. And then more and more things. Like if you just take a look at the different players in here that probably played the game for a couple more hours than I did, they have pretty cool gear. You can also craft it over time where you gather resources, you can store it in a bank if you want to. You can craft iron, for example, use that in order to craft an item. That mechanic is there as well. But here's something. If you die during your run and you lose everything in your bag, it doesn't matter how high you wear in your run, maybe it's stage three, four, five, you will lose everything. And the game is more complicated than it looks like. Now either I'm just really bad at this and it's a lack of skill and there is a button to dodge and to like jump around, if so, I didn't find it. But the circle, similar to in Fortnite, how the eye of the storm or whatever, how the storm like closes in and your actual range of walking around without taking damage gets smaller and smaller, that becomes at some point so small that no matter what you do, you will get hit by the enemies. And whether you get something like a health potion that can drop is up to chance. It's fully random, as it seems so far. Now that means either I have to change the way I walk, because I just walked in circles to like bundle all the embassies on one giant pile so I can like AOE them down, but that only works so far. So far, for the fact that it's completely free and probably has some implementation with crypto and your wallet and so on and so forth, maybe NFTs in the future as well, this right now is simply fun to play and free. So for me, this is a game that I will 
take a look at further and stay up to date with that. And even right here, when you take a look at this video, those are the latest stages in the player. You have a whole lot of things. First of all, you have more than just your normal ability. You have, I think, up to four additional ones, or five even. You have magic abilities, you have various other things. You probably have more than 100 health. And one thing to notice is, every single time you level up, like right there, even if you're in a group, the game waits until every single person selected an option. So if you want to, and you play alone, for example, you can level up, and that's like your pause button. Because you can't pause otherwise, but you can pause the game by leveling up. Overall, if you like this style of gameplay, it's free to sign up. All you gotta do is put in your email, and overall, I'm just happy there's at least development in the whole Web3 play-to-earn gaming space where the games are fun first and then there's going to be a token and other stuff later on. I'll keep you updated how this one goes. If there are any big changes and hot fixes like the ones mentioned over here, there are quite a lot. And if there are other games that are fun to play, let me know because I want to test more Web3 games. The next two that I want to take a look at are Parallel TCG. And then I played Alluvium Zero for the past week or so and I want to make a video about that. If there are any other games, let me know. Have a good rest of the day and I see you fairly soon. Take care.